after many attempts, <laughs> we I, I did guess, it. <laughs> we finally did it. We finally got together and we are going to spend the next hour together talking about you and your artwork and getting to know you a little bit. And, but before we do that, I have to say that with all of that, um, canceling, we're not scan, rescheduling, rescheduling, rescheduling over and over. You were so gracious and oh. like so enthusiastic about all of this. And I was just like <laughs> tickled pink. I'm like, I want to know this lady. She oh. is cool. So have you always had this sort of um, happy, cheery, whatever sort of personality, do you think? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, as far as I can remember, I've always kind of been this way but my I grew up with a fam. it was not my father was a very difficult person to grow up with but we were all very punny and jokesters and um especially on April Fool's Day my mother would do all kinds of things to us she would pin me to the bed or <laughs> this one, my sister had this had roller those pink rollers you know used to wear to bed and a cap used to put on and she tied the cap to the a blind. So when she woke up, she couldn't get up. So I kind of, that's how I kind of grew up. <laughs> so your mom, wow. Yeah, my mom was a real prankster. And then my great uncle was always telling jokes and puns and stuff like that. So. Well, you just have a really, I don't know. You know, the other thing is, I mean, we're going to take a look at your work here in a minute, but um you, I mean, your work is like astounding. Like it's just like Aww. blow your mind, amazing. And you don't seem to have any ego. I mean, it's like very, very. I mean, you could. I mean, you could walk around thinking <laughs> you are really something, Catherine. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm sort of almost speechless by the level Thank of your you. work. And yet, you just seem so like such a normal person. Well, maybe because I'm from Wisconsin, you know, Midwest people are pretty laid back and crazy. So you're uh, family keeps me pretty grounded too. So, and you've always been from the Midwest. I mean, you're born and raised. Yeah, yeah, in Wisconsin for first 38 years before I moved out to California. Wisconsin nice. Well, Midwest nice. Maybe there's a Wisconsin Wisconsin nice. There's definitely a Minnesota nice. And I have to tell you, I just real quick. Having lived in the Northwest most of my life and just moving to the Midwest the last five years is really true. Like, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, mean, think, I, I, I think Milwaukee or Wisconsin was voted like top 10 for friendliest places to be. So I can't yeah. remember if it was the city or the state, but not, not even so much friendly. It's just nice. Like, yeah, it's nice. Like, they're just nice to each other. I don't like what? Well, I, I don't know you. Why are you being so nice? <laughs> yeah, it's different in the in the Seattle area. Now I'm gonna get, you know, emails or somebody saying, We're nice in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, it's a really different nice. Anyway, okay. Um, so I think we're just because the work is so astounding, I think we well, no, let me ask you a couple other things first. Um, how long have you been doing color pencil and and art? Okay, so uh art, you know, kind of all my life, right? Uh, but when I grew up, I was more crafting. I, I really consider myself more of a creator than anything because um, I just love to create. So when growing up, it was all crafty stuff until high school. And that's kind of where I found out about fine art and started drawing and painting. Um, we only did watercolor in high school, but we also had um, ceramics and jewelry making. So that's where I kind of started learning about fine art. And then I went to college and then eventually I went into, got my BFA in art. But um, yeah, I've always loved to just create things. So your first degree was not in art or, or you, or you did major in art? I did major in art. After, I didn't, I went in on um, declared major because you know, my father wanted me to be a nurse or that a, was going to be my next accountant. question. Like your dad <laughs> was, was cool with you being an artist? No, not at all. In fact, I don't think he even knew to the bitter end that I had switched my um, major to uh, BFA <laughs> to art. Wow. Only my mom knew. And she was supportive. Um, 
they just, you know, like a lot of parents, they just didn't think you can make any kind of money. So yeah. very discouraging of it. Yeah. But your mom, and your mom, I'm sure was, if they could have controlled me, they yeah. definitely would have made me into an accountant because that's what most of my siblings went into. So what made you the rebel? Well, I just, um, I don't know. I just always loved to create and draw, you know, eventually draw. And I used to be a huge sewer. So that's why I actually was looking into the fashion art. To, my mom, this is how old. Oh, okay, old school this is. So my, my parents had no clue about art. So my mom and I went to downtown Milwaukee library and tried to find books on art and careers in art. And so there wasn't very many, you know, so while we, all we could come up with was teaching or, or fashion design. And since I was a huge sewer, I thought maybe that would be what I wanted to go into. But when I got there and started taking some fashion design classes, I just, I actually didn't like the people very much in that. And um, so then part of that program was you had to take an art class. And so when I went over to the art department, I just like, um, this is my, you know, this is my place. I could just feel it. And then in my sophomore year, a new teacher came on board, um, a new professor, professor, I should say, his name was Steve Hanks. And um, we were drawing, you know, back then you always draw from life. So uh, we were over in the science department drawing the um, taxidermy animals. And he, he said to me, you know, you got to be an artist. And I'm like, okay, I got some confirmation finally nice. that I should be nice. an artist. So now, there was a famous watercolorist, Steve Hanks. Um, yeah, that's not the same one, but he is very good. He was um, taught life drawing and painting. So uh, I took almost all his classes. He was really, he's a great painter. So before we pop over to your art, let's just take a minute to look at your very nice and neat um, studio. And it uh, uh, looks like maybe you've got your pencils in, in shallow. Oh, well, you know, I just moved. Oh, literally finished moving Thanksgiving weekend. So it's kind of not like, I just kind of threw it up there. I'm not really or organized that much because, you know, I just have so, so much to do. So, Yeah. But yeah, this is my little art area. It's in my bedroom. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah, I used to have it in my little family room in my old house. And this one, my bedroom was huge. So I made it in here. Nice. So what's, close the the little, door. what's the thing <laughs> with the pink glasses on it? Is that a, a rolling table or? Oh, a, this? Yeah. Yeah. That's my Randy Rainbow reading glasses. <laughs> I love Randy Rainbow. Yeah, he, yeah he's, he's, he's very, very entertaining. So that's a little rolling cart of something. Yeah, I just I just bought this on Amazon. It's just a really, because I, I didn't, my, in my other house, I had tables on both sides. And so I needed I something on thing. this side. I, I want my that right thing. Side. So listen, I really want that thing. Um, oh, I'll send you the link. If you send me the link and then uh, in case anybody else wants it, I mean, yeah, I, awesome. I can only see a little yeah. bit of it, but it looks and like- it's nice because it's got, you know, a top on it and you can put stuff down there. It's so like for people, who, yeah, people who draw from their chairs or their sofas. I mean, that would be so handy. Yeah, it's really nice. I love it. So, so I just gonna, made it this time, you know, for this house, because I need something on my right and right handed. So. I'm going to, you send me the link and then I'm going to put it on the Padlet so that anybody okay. watching can, can get the link too. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Nobody said anything in the chat. So let's go over to, yeah. All right. Go over and share your, go look at your gorgeous work. I'm excited. Okay. And here we are. Oh my gosh, Catherine. I mean, it just. I don't even understand you. I don't get you. <laughs> I don't. All right. I don't know. A bit of a perfectionist. As you okay, say. there you go. That kind of explained it, didn't it? Right there. You're a perfectionist. I yeah, it kind of runs in my family. This work is perfect. And you like I'm I'm like looking around at the whole thing and trying to imagine where I might start. Well, the owl, I put it at in years, um, if you can see. So the owl is actually uh the first thing i think yeah so that was like my first um i was doing graphite pencil before 
Okay. And so uh, this was just, I didn't know what I was doing. I just thought, oh, I wanna make this a colored eye. And so I had some colored pencils um, that I had bought for my kids because I never used colored pencils before. And uh, so I just, that's how I started is just that one eye. That's why I put this one in. Did you um, win an award for this? No, uh -uh. I didn't enter this in anything. Oh, hold on. Somebody just said, Margaret, thank you so much. Looks like the chat is disabled, Anne, but the Q&A is working. So my apologies again. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> it's troubleshooting all day long in 2023. It just has to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. If you have a question, put it in Q&A. Thank you so much, Margaret. Okay. Uh, you never entered this in anything? Why? No, uh -uh. why, 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 why? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't, I don't, maybe I wasn't doing competitions back then. I think, you know what? I, what, I don't think I was. I was just doing okay. um, pet portraits. And then I just started expanding into wildlife. Actually, and you know, and that's a good. this was kind of just the first attempt with colored pencil. So that's a good, that makes me think. Oh, Gemma, I'm sorry. Gemma has a question. What about the table? Yes, Gemma, we're going to put a link in the, the Padlet. You'll get an email afterwards with directing you to the Padlet. That's where we're seeing the art right now. And uh, there will be a link to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. Um, oh, her working table where she draws. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this, my draft. Yeah. Table? Actually, um, a friend gave that to me. He was an architect where he is an architect and uh, he had, he got a new table. So he just gave me that. So it's just a used, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, I don't, what I don't like about it, I, I would like to make it vertical and it doesn't go vertical. So eventually I will replace it where I can move it all the way to have a vertical because, you know, um, when you've been drawing a long time, you start getting like aches and pains and certain like I get this pinched nerve when I'm at it too long. So I think having it vertical would help me a lot. I got carpal tunnel in my left hand, not my, not my right, right. It oh, really? Well, from um, holding my head this oh, way for really, like, yeah. For like 16 hours a day. So leaning on the table and doing, oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's but, weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't think drawing would, well, anyway. Um, so actually, this that makes me think. You said you were doing portrait commissions. I mean, uh, pet commissions. Yeah. So what did get you from um, and starting graduating, to graduating with an art degree and this piece? Like, what was in between? Oh well, okay. So after I graduated from college, I went on to art school, and then I went in there for book um, illustration, but I just didn't. It wasn't for me. It was too much pressure. Yeah. And so I got into a gallery in Milwaukee. And so I started doing uh, water. Actually, I was doing watercolors back then, uh, urban scenes. And so that was going pretty well. But that gallery closed down because I got a divorce. And then um, and then I got a divorce <laughs> and I moved to California. So and then I went to art school um, just to get back into because I had two kids, two little kids. So I wasn't doing any artwork at that time. So to get back into it, I just went to art school and then I eventually uh, worked under Margot Leonard, um, who is now passed, but I took painting from her. We painted in her garage. Uh, she taught classes and then I had to go back to work. So, you know, I just, I stopped drawing for a long time. And then when the girls got older um, and were doing their homework and I didn't have to help them or I couldn't help them, I should say. Um, <laughs> I started drawing when they were doing their homework. So I just picked up a pencil just because I, I, you know, I couldn't start painting. It was too much, but a pencil you can pick up and put down. And so I just started, um, I lo always loved drawing. So, and I always loved graphite. So I just started drawing and I was actually drawing people then and animals. And um, I just uh, decided to start a pet portrait business and I think that was like 2008. And so, do we um, have any of those commissions here? No, I didn't um, put any of those up. Yeah. Um, 
they, so, it was all graphite. It was all black and white. And oh, I did right. that. You know, I, it was just an interesting time to start doing it. Now, you know, the mark kind of saturated right now with a lot of pet portrait artists, but back then there was hardly anyone doing pet portraits. So it started becoming very lucrative. I, I started advertising on Craigslist. I don't know if that thing's even still around, but Craigslist and Facebook. And, you know, it just started as anything. It just, you start getting um, people right. buying and then um, they start referring. And I have one right. client that's just been phenomenal. He's referred like so many people to me. And a lot of times, you know, they'd have one done and then they have two more down the road. Like this one client, I think I'm on this. I'm working on a commission now for him. Um, I think I'm on my like fifth or sixth commission from him. So of his animals. So it's, it's pretty, it's been pretty good. I try, I've cut way back on my commission work. So um, I could do more shows, enter more shows. I just, I don't have as much time, you know, with I work full time, so. Let me ask you real quick. Oh yeah, okay, that was what I was like. That's what really oh, blew yeah. me away was that you work full time and are creating this stuff, which is just like crazy. What do you do, uh, you know, what is your work? I'm an assistant at a real estate company. So it's just nothing to do with, <laughs> nothing to do with art at all. Very more technical transaction coordinator how do you I mean yeah. as a perfectionist and you know I mean how are you finding where do you find time do you sleep <laughs> not anymore <laughs> I used to now I actually I was I have a kind of a obsessive personality but you was talking about you were drawing 16 hours a day um, well, that wasn't on weekends. That. That's kind of what I was doing too, oh, you know, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. And then I put in like usually about two to three hours a night during the week. So I was working like in my heydays, not anymore, 30 hours a week on my art. So that's incredible. Oh, yeah, that's that's all studio week. time. Yeah. I mean, I have, ha I had decades of 70 hour weeks. It, you can get through it. Um, yeah. but I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. Either. So we'll go back. Time. we have another 2014. So was, this must've been after the owl. Oh my gosh. Catherine, so this, I put this one in, cause this is my very first full colored pencil piece. That's why I put this one in there and it did sell right away, but I learned so much in the, and this was with Prismacolor. I, you know, I, when I was starting, I didn't know where to start. Cause so I went to the library again and got out color pencil books. And then all those artists were using Prismacolor and this paper, which I think was Hanson. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't like either of those things. I didn't like the Prismacolors because the black especially would get that, um, what do you call that? Um, black bloom. bloom. The bloom, right? And you then my friend told me, oh, you have to take a cloth. And so, oh my gosh, it was too much. But I did maybe three or four full pieces like this in um, with this paper and um, Prismacolor. And then I switched over to Polychromos. So, um, I mean, obviously it's just, I mean, you're, it's your drawing skill. I think that just your drawing skills that just blow me away. This, uh, I don't know how well people can see it, but this branch right here, it just makes you want to cry. It's just so perfectly drawn. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, you know, I life. have to thank my, you know, my background because we did, uh, everything was from life. You know, nothing was from photographs back then as you probably you know, when you started too, we did still lifes and models and everything was from life. So you got, you really learn your drawing skills. You have to, you know, I didn't, you have, I didn't, I didn't have any art classes because when oh. I went to college, it was like all this crazy, crazy stuff. And I walked in oh, like modern art. Yeah, yeah, that was it. There was no drawing. And um, uh, it just, those people scared me. The prof scared me. Everything about it scared me. I never took a class. It was just too intimidating. I wasn't that person, you know, I wanted to yeah. draw daffodils, fading <laughs> daffodils and a little, you know, anyway. Yeah. Your draw. I mean, this section right here, not that there's, I mean, the fox is amazing too, but this, I, I think that one of the things that sets, um, 
professional, fabulous artists apart from really good artists is the attention to the every inch, every square inch of the canvas of the of the drawing. Mm -hmm. And you know, there my eye cannot land anywhere on this piece that isn't perfection. Like you, you, you know, well, you I always like every day. part of you know, it is. It's not just about the animal. It is about the whole, like you said. It's just as important. You have to have the surrounding area support it really well and not overtake it. But I've learned so much about that over the years, about composition. And oh, it's just beautiful. These colors. Oh, my gosh. I just OK, Sweet. so that's your first <laughs> color pencil piece. Yeah, the full first one. Just as and then the mountain lion. I think that's next. Yeah. So that I did for uh, the California Wildlife. Uh, center that was one of their patients and um that was another really learning boy learning experience for sure yeah and prismacolor again now it's it like so you burnish at least in this i'm not sure it looked like you I, burnished I didn't it. even I didn't even really know about British. Right. But the paper service is like completely obliterated. And you know, yeah. it, it just looks like there's a lot of pressure. Um, oh boy, yeah. 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 Almost like you were painting in it, you know, sort of a painterly look, you know, over here. But then that it's also the yeah. But then you also have this like really fine, you know, work over here. It's such mm -hmm. an interesting, I guess. I guess the focus of the, so you worked from a photo here, right? Yeah, and yeah, because this is one of their patients, yeah. Right. They, they're out in Malibu, um, California, or Calabasas, I guess, area. Do you remember, so this is a long time ago, this is eight years ago, did you remember anything like, uh, anything specific about this, like? Yeah, I mean, this one's pretty much etched in my head because I was, I just didn't know what I was doing at all. So I was using so much pressure and I was almost to the point where the paper was starting to rip, you know, a bit. So um, that was one thing I really had to learn is to be really uh, light touch with my layers. So this is kind of the first one where it was just so heavy and I just like saturated the paper. <laughs> I don't think there could have been one more layer put on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure in the background now, how did you, how did you leave the, uh, how did you do the whiskers? Um, just like I did, well, this is what, I just did the same kind of methods I did in um, graphite and I drew around the whiskers. Oh, you did? Yeah. So everything is drawn around that. That's what makes cats so hard, you know, especially back then. Now I use indenting. I mean, because the, you know, you're, um, you are a perfectionist. Do you work with a magnifying? No, just my, no. just my trusty glasses. <laughs> <Your reading> glasses. <laughs> Cause these, the edges of these whiskers are so perfect. Like you're, that's why I asked. I'm like, well, that's yeah, very really hard to do. Yeah. Very sharp pencils going very slowly, but oh, that's, slowly. that's the way I, I learned to draw is the, to look at the negative shapes. So that's how I drew too. I drew around things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's just exquisite. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. Oh. Do you know? Oh, does it say how big it was? How big was this? Oh, that maybe like eight by 10, not that big. Eight by eight. That's, that's how I was working for portraits back then. So I always worked work pretty small. Nothing was maybe that like the owl was nine by 10 or nine by 12. Nothing was very big back then. And um, so was this, were you already getting commissions by 2015? Yeah, yeah, because I started in uh, 2008. So I was by 2015 is when I was putting in my 30 hours. Okay. Yeah, I was really working hard that back then. Man, this must have driven you nuts. Well, and this is all- Because you're, you're not working on black paper, are you? No. I started with a background and I hated it. So um, I just decided to make it black. And that, this was, I used black Prismacolor, I think on that background. Oh man. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't easy, but um, I liked how I kind of blended in his mane with the background. Uh, yeah, on top. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. But this is mostly polychromos. Oh, so this is well, and, the first one that you're and, showing. And um, I think, yes, back then I was using the white um, Pablo pencil. I love that pencil. That's great for making whiskers and all those little chin hairs and all that. On top of the black? Yeah, well, the black oh. is around. I drew around it. Yeah, yeah. And then went back, you know, kind of back and forth. So what did you like about the Pablo? Pablo. The Pablo is nice because it keeps the, the point really sharp. It stays sharp and I can, so I can get those hairs. And it's just like a kind of, it's not real, um, uh, oily like the po um, polychromos and just got a little bit of wax in there and it just can go over things so that's why I liked it so much so it, sounds, that one. it sounds like I don't use anything but Prismacolor um, uh, it sounds like it it's a harder pencil yeah it's a hard much harder that's yeah. what I didn't like about um, now maybe it's changed um Prismacolor. I do use one. I do use the white Prismacolor still, but um, that's what I didn't like. Cause I think when I was pressing so hard, it would just like break immediately. And it was so frustrating. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why when I found the polychromos and they didn't break when I was like, I okay, <laughs> that's so funny, you know, cause I mean, I barely touched the paper. So I'm <laughs> People say Prismacolors break, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Mine never break, and they don't. <laughs> but, you know, Mine now that I immediately break. <laughs> no, I can totally see that, Kathy. No. All right, one of my patients. Oh, Gail says one of my patients. Oh, my gosh, Gail. Oh, I wonder if that's Gail Uehara. Um, Do you know who that is, Catherine? Gail what? Um, Uehara? I, I don't know. Yeah, how... yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so that the last one was one of her patients right here. <laughs> that's what she she said in the Q and A. Oh, that's cool. The mountain lion. All right. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that's three fifty. Uh, no, three sixteen. Then we go to I mean seventeen, twenty seventeen, and yes, yeah, so this is update. another working on the background again and you know you can see the difference between my work now and then but you know for then I was really happy with this yeah is um, this is kind of a kind of a study in textures really yeah I mean, yeah so this was a, a bobcat that was uh up in the tree that my dog discovered on our way to hiking and um I took out I like this what I liked about this is because there was a lot of branches in the way uh, of his face and body so I took a lot of stuff out and that was kind of when I the pet portraits really helped me because you know people don't send the best pictures right um that's why I kind of wanted to get out of it I was just kind of tired of that but um you learn you had to learn to take things out and you know rebuild things and so this was kind of like my first taste from my own work of making things up you know so like this because there was a branch going right over his face so I had to make that up and um which is fun you know it, you start getting more confidence in yourself when you when you have to do those things merry-go-rounds are fun merry-go-rounds yeah what? making up a cat face is not <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get you I got you <laughs> eating cookies is fun yeah, I, I mean, to me, I mean, that just gives me, you know, hives thinking about having to make up a cat face, but I don't know if I, you know, cat Well, to eat, because then I get confidence in myself, you know, the more I do that kind of stuff and the more I trust myself to, um, you know, to, if I see, it, if I have an image now and I see, I change a lot of things now. Um, oh, so wonderful. Yeah. Wow. What a great um, lesson. Yeah, it really is. I, I, editing things and taking things out, putting things in, you just, I, you build such confidence and really learn a lot about the animal. Now, once again, before we move on, uh, this, this sweep, oh my gosh, this beautiful sweep. And then your pine, the pine needles. I don't oh. know if I've ever seen more beautiful pine needles anywhere. Yeah, that was not easy. And I was under deadline because this I entered in 
think this is one of my first pieces I entered in the Mountain Oyster Club in Arizona. And I was down to the deadline on this. So I was just really go trying to go fast, but still make it as good as I could. Yeah, you just have yeah. such, a, such a terrific eye. It's like a crazy, beautifully developed eye. All right, so that was 2017. Oh my goodness. Now you went over the over the edge and went to crazy. <laughs> So this is an elephant. I went to Africa in 2010 and this was a resonant elephant, which I'm still happy to say, I just went there to Africa in, in July of this year and he's still there. So I'm going to draw him again. I'm so thrilled, but this was, I was so happy with this piece. I, I actually sold this before I was even done. I just, um, how did yeah. that happen? Oh, but you know, cause when you're putting on social media, people see things. I, I, that's happened to me twice where I, I'm like halfway drawing through it and someone wants to buy it. So this eye, this eyelash. I know. Oh, it's just, all right. So that makes me think like, are there what? Okay. So I know for my own work, there's a little spot somewhere, even if I don't like the piece, there's something in the piece that I just love. It's very, like I can look at that little thing and say, did I really do that? You know, is, <laughs> are you the same? Um, you know, I'm more critical of my work than anything. And I'll, I'll kind of this one now, this is why this one is one of my favorites is because there's nothing in this one that I don't like, but oh. usually there's always something, you know, in a piece that I don't like. And I like cringe sometimes when I see it. Yeah. Um, but this is one of my favorites. I think I, especially for back then, I think I did pretty well on this one. And, you know, it, it's uh, of an animal that, you know, reminds me of Africa when I was in there. So, yeah, I mean, but both eyes, I mean, this, this eye must have been really difficult because there's very little to see. I mean, you, well, you know what I do I, on my computer, I really lighten up to see the details um, more closely. And then, so, um, a lot of this is not actually, maybe it's true, but into a photograph, you know, it distorts right. so much. So that I do that a lot with my work is lighten it up on my computer. And so I can see the details more. So it is, it's an interesting, what it's interesting what you did here, because not only did you, I mean, you had to come up with a system, um, a method that not only showed the wrinkles, but the texture of the skin itself you know, on top of the wrinkles. Like I think people focus on wrinkles, but you've got all this texture, you know, just plain on the skin. Did you experiment with that? Like on a step, do you experiment or do you just, just you just- No, I just it? dive in. I, you know what, about, something about me is I love a challenge, right? And so I won't really do a piece in, of my own unless they're, it's challenging. Um, and that's how I kind of keep growing with it. But I, I do like, like I'll, you know, when I first started and like, why I always, oh, this is my conversation in my head. Why the heck did I want to do this? How did I think I was going to draw this? <laughs> but I just draw, start, start real slowly and, you know, gradually I'll get it. And then I get into the groove right. and then it works, you know, but I'll, I just like challenges. I like to challenge myself all the time with my work. So this, this, what I would call base skin texture, these, these odd little uh -huh. shapes. Do you feel like you just looked at the skin on the photo and said, okay, it's got these odd little shapes. Let me try that. Or is it more of an interpretation? I, I just find it really, this, I just find this really an interesting, a fascinating. You know, back then I'm way more uh, loose now. And, but back then I really tried to follow the, my photo reference. Okay. Now I'm like, oh yeah, that's good enough. No one knows. <laughs> okay. No one knows exactly. So you were actually drawing what you saw. Oh yeah. I, Cause I use a um, proportional divider. Yeah. And I'm like constant, I, back then I was constantly, I don't use this. I still use this, but not anywhere near as much. I'll do a whole section and not use it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. But, but I think you know, it's just years of experience, you know? 
maybe we should i mean i know what it is maybe not everyone listening does oh is that better? i mean how you would use it oh uh Just real quick real quick okay so let me get a photo here hold it okay so let's say this is my drawing i will go from the edge to here to measure it and then here and then find it on my drawing does that make sense yeah so you're so that's how right. i find things and draw them it's like uh jason morgan i learned this from jason morgan okay jason morgan. yeah so yeah. once once i could you know people were coming out and teaching on youtube i, I watched jason morgan a lot in the beginning and that's okay. that's what he used so mm -hmm. i used it and that's why i loved it and i still use it but just not as much like on oh. this piece i constantly used it somebody said that they couldn't see you holding that up oh but i don't i don't know why let me see, that they could only see there the i think you can see it on the black better it's just you know i got it in an art store at in like the architectural yeah but now they have to, you know what did you call it again you can buy proportional divider on um amazon yeah all right um somebody asked what was your color palette for the elephant and do you do a line drawing first on the elephant or did you uh, yes i do a line drawing but it's usually general and then the proportional you know you don't even really need one once you start with the proportional divider but um, it is good to have your basic lines down so you kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. And then what was palette. the other question? The oh, palette. color palette? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm sh so long ago. I, right. I right. couldn't tell you exactly, but, you know, totally um, there's purples in there for sure. A lot of purples, greens, browns, um, you know, both warm and cold grays, but yeah. I'll probably promos. This was, uh, except for, um, you know, a little bit of the um, white um, Pablo, this is all completely polychromos. Yeah, okay. All right, so that was 2016. <laughs> we, have, we have to move along, we're running out of, or oh. 17, I, uh, it's me, it's my fault. Um, I'm supposed to be running this thing. I'm too busy <laughs> looking at everything going, just being aghast at your skill. Uh, this is the next year, a beautiful light. I mean, uh, actually, um, when I think about it, up until this point, light has not really been a subject of yeah. for art. And that, but then this one just, boy, the light just thing. Yeah, I took that down at, when I went, to, we had a beach party at my uh, work and full of these birds, pelicans. So I just loved, oh my gosh, I remember loving doing this because it's so many colors, the blues, the greens, yeah. the reds. It was just really fun. And this is the beginning of like learning to do these like backgrounds. Oh. That was big on this, you know, the fading into the different right. colors. Yeah. So that was for me real, like one of the first and a real test on how to learn, learn to do that. And that was just color pencil? Just color pencil, polychromos and, using and a lighter polychromos. Touch. Probably a lighter touch. Yeah, a lot. You can tell, right? Nice. Much lighter touch than when I started. Now I'm way lighter, even. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the light. Oh my gosh. It, that little bit of light that you've left in that background. That I just, purposely did that by his eye. Yeah. yeah. It's like it just makes the whole thing glow. It's yeah. So amazing. Uh, let's see. Thanks. I thought I could see purples. Oh, we're talking about the 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 elephant. Okay. All right. So um, that fits the bill. What a great title. <laughs> and we go to, I don't know which to do next, except for I love this one so much. So we'll go to this. Oh, and that's that. Uh, the, the background is actually once again, burnished, like a hot, yeah. heavier. Yeah. That's where I'm, uh, you know, this is continuing on learning that background. Um, I took this up in, um, Pismo Beach, um, the butterflies, the monarch butterflies, and they're during their migration are there. So this is that, and learning that background again. You know, I sometimes I shudder a little bit when I see these beginning ones, but the butterflies are really. I love the butterfly part. <laughs> oh, I think they're. I don't. I can't imagine what you're shuddering over. Um, yeah, because I'm just so I much think... better now. You have to give yourself grace, but. Well, there's nothing wrong with this. It's one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> um, Judy wants to know what surface this was. 
Um, at this time, I was using all uh, Strathmore um, Bristol board, uh, the four and 500 series. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess for me, I'm going to actually um, go back to the, the main, because I want to see this composition more better the the butterflies I mean I, this is the sort of thing I just love where you you I like lots of negative space and um yeah you know where you chose not to fill up the whole frame with the butterfly uh and, and that's just your art background and your fantastic eye I'm sure and you know I I started studying um uh composition back in 2019 I think it was around 2019 oh really listening to um a lot of podcasts that actually was the plein air podcast with Eric Rhodes and he has all the master artists on there and listening they give such great advice and that's where I was really learning not that I didn't learn in school but right. just kind of on the edges um through that podcast is where I learned a lot about composition I mean same here you um here it is a picture of a duck and it's like 95% not duck. Yeah. You know, it's just a fab fabulous. I mean, yeah, you can see, yeah, the beginnings of, you know, working with composition and, 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 um, back then it was interesting composition. Now I'm trying to get more into compelling composition. Oh. So yeah. Wow. So that was I had going. to <laughs> ask you, What's the difference between an interesting composition and a compelling composition? Um, I would say like more of the fast and furious is getting there, that piece or furious. And it's like where there's lots of um, elements in there. Yeah. Wow. Because I have like where I'm really thinking about it a lot. There's parts where your eye can rest, right? The branches are leading into the chipmunk. There's a hidden chipmunk. Oh, I'm pointing on my screen. Yes. I know, but there, here's <laughs> one. Here's the one that's not hidden. I'm gonna have to guess. Right, and there's a hidden one in there. Yes, here. very good. And then I put a little beetle in there over on because I always see those beetles when I'm hiking. And then um, there's I put a bottle cap in there. Oh, for, I see the bottle cap. For more compelling you know like it makes you stop and look through the whole thing you know and um for me the compelling parts were the the logs or the roots all leading to the chipmunk and i spent i held on to this um reference photo for there wasn't chipmunks in there um i held on to this for quite a few years before and kept working with it. i couldn't decide what animal i wanted to put in there so I was back and forth so much with this piece. And then, um, you know, when you take a photo, sometimes things like this whole one side was all whited out. So I had to make that whole side up. And then um, the dirt, I really um, loosened up there so that I could rest down there. So a lot of things I'm thinking about, you know, I love hidden things in, in pieces. So it's kind of a surprise from like, you're standing way back, you can't see it and you go up and you're sitting there looking and you find it so I like surprises and things I like leading your eye I like the third the rule of thirds um when I'm doing my work where I put things in extreme positions how large is this this is pretty big this I think was um probably 14 by 20 okay the big piece 20 is probably the largest definitely is the largest I've gone um do you have so like, it's usually around in that 16 to 20 inch range but um yeah that's a big that's a big piece that like that's like a two and a half month work well I did commissions in between too but that took a lot many months to do and you don't have a problem with um your interest or passion being sustained over such a long period well you know when I came back to it after doing a couple of commissions at Christmas time um it was really hard to get back into this and doing all that nitpicky detail. But you know, once I'm once I'm rolling, I'm I'm good. It's I just have to say, to, it's like with every drawing, though. I do this, you know, this um, triangle right here uh -huh. with the chipmunk and that background. Oh well, my! Thank God. you. I made that all up. <laughs> so gorgeous. Uh, it's a nice place for the eye to rest and for yeah, him to yeah. Draw. 
and it, but it's just like you didn't just even there that's what I'm talking about like you every square inch you care about and it's yeah. not just sort of you could have just kind of made mist back there but yeah. you didn't um and that's like to me was what puts you you know we truly are how are we going to do this because I mean this is my this one oh my god I can't, oh, how did that's you my use? kitty Livy that's yours yeah oh I had to draw her. I took that picture of her and I'm like, oh, I got to draw this. She's just too cute. <laughs> I mean, I am not a cat person. Uh, not that I'm an anti-cat person, but I mean, it, you know, and there's so many cat drawings, but this, oh my gosh, I think well, this to, is my favorite ever. Oh, thanks. Well, to me, you know what, this is um, even just as much, if not more so about the blanket. Yeah. This, if you look at this texture closely, this was an old blanket they lay on. And I just, I just, when I started this, I'm like, how the heck, why did I do this to myself? This was one of the hardest ones. But once again, once I got into the groove and really studying the pattern of the blanket, you know, in person and not yeah. just on the photograph, I, I learned about it. I learned so much with this. You one. have to say how you did that though. So did you, okay, like you, the five, the, the three minute version of like, did you put down color, the base color first? Say like the lightest. No, no. I started <laughs> one little section um, actually by, if you're looking at it on the left side is where I started. And um, I just started. Yeah. Yeah. Right below the ear. I just picked that one. Yeah. Right in there. I just picked that section and I just like an inch almost like it. Not that I grid it out or anything. But I just like, I'm just going to start a small section. This is how, if I get a really complicated um, texture is how I do things. I just start taking it little by little and then just, it just, you know, spreads out. But that was very complicated, man. And then down on the right-hand side, you know, it's uh, the blanket gets a little more tattered and trying to make that. And I was starting to get really kind of bored a little bit with that. So I was going to say, like, how did you sustain? Because it's like perfect everywhere. Once again, you're not, you didn't like say, well, this upper right corner isn't really going to matter. It looks just as good as this over here. I, the, yeah. I, I am amazed at that. I don't think there are a lot of artists who can, I mean, it's, it really takes a huge amount of um, will almost, you know, to continue to care about every square inch. Don't you think? Um, yeah, I get, you know, it just, like I said, I get started getting a little bit bored, but usually I rarely in a drawing do I, unless there's a large section, like maybe the lower left might get bored me a little bit, but, um, but I love, I love challenges, like I said, so it was challenge that blanket was challenging throughout the whole thing. And then, you know, she's laying back, so she's kind of pressed, so you know, it kind of distorts her face a little bit. So I really, that, that part too, her muzzle, cat muzzles are just so, those are really difficult. So I really worked on that too. So somebody oh, said, wow. um, uh, okay, how, how many hours on this piece? I would say easily, this took me a couple months, easily two months. These, and this wasn't even that big. I think this is like a 16 by 16. Well, there. that's pretty big too, though, for this. Sort of. Yeah. And then um, Gail wants to know, do you, do the titles come to you after you do the piece? No, it's the, these pieces are all like a whole, if that me makes any sense. Like I'll start coming up, trying to come up because they're not always easy. So I, I start like right in the beginning, I'm doing a drawing. I mean, even from like the part where I, um, my quick sketches, and thoughts about it and working with the composition, I'll start working on the titles. Yeah. And my I know I make them kind of funny and punny, but um, they always have to kind of relate to the piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like I'll just put a pun on there. It, right, it, right, right. The puns have to relate to what's going on in the piece. So yeah. sometimes some come to me, you know, easily. Others are like a huge struggle. But I keep a running list of um, titles for things that when I come up, because sometimes I'll come up with four or five for one piece and I won't use uh, four of them. So I'll just keep a running list of those in case it, in case, yeah. it is good for another piece. Yeah, I kind of do the same thing. I have a title trying time while I'm drawing. I'm trying to think of a title, you know, like 
So. Yeah, because to me, it's all it's all important. You know, it's all part of the piece. So I, I just know from judging personally, I the title is part of the piece. And um, yeah, yeah. See, I know. I think so too. Yeah. I, I get kind of disappointed when I see oh, uh, tree number two, tree number three. <laughs> Is that all you care or, about? Or people piece? asking on Instagram, oh, can you come up with a title for me? <laughs> all right. So we have a tweet. Somebody requested uh, to that we talk about a tweetable moment. This is absolutely oh. insanely fabulous. Thank you. I have to give all the credit to Cody. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> but this is another one I really composed. So... Um, and, and I hung on to the reference material when I first took a picture of Cody, she was just sleeping. She didn't have one eye open. She was sound asleep oh. um, on my back stoop when I, and I just saw her and I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to take a couple pictures. So I just took it with my camera, my, with my phone. And then, you know, it's like, this is what goes through my head. I'd like, I can't draw this on Strathmore. I don't know how to do these, um, grasses. So in 2022 when I started in January I said I'm going to experiment with some different substrates so I started this drawing on sanded paper and I absolutely hated sanded paper it just like ate up my pencils like yeah, immediately yeah. and a lot of dust and I didn't like that at all so then my friend Lisa said well let's because we were doing this experiment together so then we both, she said, let's try pastel mat. Maybe she was already using pastel mat. I don't know, but I never had tried it before. And um, it worked so much better on pastel mat. But, you know, even by the end, I wasn't convinced on that substrate. But now it's the only thing I use. I just really? love it so much. Yeah. I keep trying it and I just fail. I have to say that the, I mean, the, you know, I, the bird is exquisitely drawn. Obviously the bird was not in your, original photo right no no so you had to get that angle right like the angle of how like where did you find the bird that fit perfectly I just I just went around the neighborhood taking tons of bird pictures for for a long time you know before I before I landed on the right one but um okay that makes sense and then, yeah, you know, cause all that's just like, and, and leading the grasses, you know, there are a lot of things I put in there that weren't in the original, um, piece, you know, photograph. Right. Of her. So grasses are so beautiful. Um, do you know, uh, Andrew Wyeth's, um, uh, father's name, he, I'm blanking on it. Uh, oh, um, like Nathaniel or something like that, or I thought it was initials. Oh, MC Wyatt. MC. Wyatt. Yeah. MC Wyatt. Yeah. Um, he, these grasses look like an NCYF to me. Like, oh, yeah, he's thank one of you. my heroes. I mean, he's just like he and his wife he, is my like all time favorite artist. Well, so. NCYF um actually reminds me of you it's, because he changed so much. Like he didn't. Yeah. He would just throw stuff together. Some of it was just out of his head, you know. And like basically, that's what you've done here is with the eye. Yeah. So I was trying to connect the two sections because she was totally sleeping. And so I just, that was another thing I just made up, you know, and actually that's not even her eye color, but I wanted it green to go with the grass. So it's kind of all these little elements that, you know, I'm putting together in this piece. So, and the grass is exactly. connecting is another thing to connect the two sections. Because in the beginning it was like, it's two, two totally separate things. I need to connect these areas, you yeah. know? Well, you did a beautiful job. Um, Crystal wants to know if you have any drafting film experience or slice tool experience. Slice, I, I, you know what? I actually don't like the slice. I I bought one and I tried it, but I don't, I think it works better for like um, Prismacolor or Luminance. Oh. Where it's more of waxy. Okay. Um, it doesn't work it, to me, I, unless I'm, you know, not really doing it correctly, but I think I am. It doesn't really work with polychromos. So I actually think because I thought it didn't work um, on Prismacolor and and then I realized it wasn't the Prismacolor it was the Stonehenge um, because oh. I've been working a little bit on canvas and it works really well on canvas. Wow. So, well, um, it works on film too really well doesn't it? I don't know. Oh okay. Yeah. Somebody does. Oh yeah so Crystal said do you have any drafting film experience did you already say no? 
Sorry. I did one piece on it and oh. I didn't really like it. Yeah. All right. We have to talk about this one because, well, and actually the next one too, but this is so interesting to me because of the limited palette, like this, like very monochrome, which I don't see anywhere else. I have to guess that you were doing this on purpose. Yes, I was doing it very much on purpose. Do you want to I say? I wanted to kind of all blend. And I'm what I really like trying to do is put the animal into environment. And that was kind of my way. And actually the flowers were a lot brighter, but I wanted to keep it in that muted tones. And then I had to, uh, the rock was, I don't know, there was something weird with the rock. So I had to make that whole area up down there. And so I just wanted to keep them all very limited um, uh, palette. So just some browns and some purples and such. And the yellows, yeah. of course, the gold. Oh, effective. But also, why a circle? Um, yeah, I know. I've gotten nicked on that for this one. I, you know, that was 2022, 20, and I was trying to do some different things right. and just seeing. And I really liked kind of that fisheye kind of closing yeah. in on him. <clears throat> but it was rejected for from a show for that reason. Oh. It's because it was a circle. So uh, you won't see any more circles from me. Wow. But, and yet now you've done the, oh, but this is not a circle, is it? I mean, this is not a, this is a square. Well, you know what this is from? Um, this was my very last piece I've actually done of this year. Um, this Turkel pet portrait competition, do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay, so Turkel is an art supply place. They do a lot of um, these wood, this is wood. Okay. So um, every year, well, let's see now as I think it's going on four, five years. I, yeah, five years that the competition, because I couldn't do the first two years, I was just too busy. So the last three years I've entered their pep and you have to do it on this substrate, whatever it is, it's different every year. Wow. So at the first year I actually came in second place. And then the next year I got a um, honorable mention. This one I didn't win any awards with, but this is my, this is my um, sister's dog oh. and Maya. And so I, I just love this one. So this was a piece of wood that came that you bought in this shape. Yeah. Yeah. You, for their pet portrait, it's a different shape, every different shape wood every year. So that's really it, intriguing. You have to like make a composition that fits that piece. Yeah. And this one was super hard. Yeah. I, if you look, if you go and look at some of what people entered it, you can tell if people had a really hard time with this. And I did too. Like it took me a long time to um, find something. And I just happened to snap this one day when I was over at my sister's and I'm like, oh my God, this fits perfectly in this shape. So could you um, also send me, when you're sending me a link to that little table, could you send me a link to this show or the- Oh yeah, absolutely. It's all. always in the summer. I think it starts in June. Okay. And yeah, yeah. And it's really cheap. You you only, it's, I think the substrate's like $19 and you don't have to pay anything. Once you buy that, you're entered into the oh, show. That's cool. Uh, so Robin wants to know if you do any video tutorials, but before you answer that, um, uh, I do, we do, we have to look at this because- this, yeah. is, this is um, <laughs> a, a tutorial. tutorial that she's done for us, not a video, but it's, um, well, I mean, you, yeah, you did this for us. Um, uh, it's an in-depth, uh, like 30 step tutorial. That's why I put this one in. <laughs> what was that? That's why I put this one in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like astounding. I mean, if nothing else, even if you never want to draw a an, an elephant, the water, oh my gosh, the water, look at that water is incredible. So uh, I think that when we, we send you an email, you know, afterwards, after these things and say, thank you for attending. And I'm pretty sure we'll have a link to this if you want yeah. to really see how Catherine works. And then, um, yeah, do you have any video instruction? No, I don't. Yeah, because you're working 30 hours a week and, you yeah, know. Yeah, I'm working doing full time that. doing this yeah. now. When, yeah, they, and, when I retire, maybe one day. Yeah. So when it, when can we look forward to that? Uh, well, four and a half years, <laughs> four and a half years. All right. Yeah. Well, this, we didn't get to talk about this one, but it's, you know, adorable and it is compelling and you've got just the cutest little chipmunk. Where, where do you, oh, Wisconsin. So I guess you have chipmunks in Wisconsin. Yeah. We have them out here in California too. Okay. Oh, you're in California now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And then actually a gorgeous owl. And this one is, what is this one called? All oh, owl by myself. <laughs> Which she is. <laughs> 
again, another gorgeous background. Oh yeah, this is another, I'm really working on these backgrounds. So this was really you know, fun. You could write a book on backgrounds uh, in your retirement, because I know that's yeah. exactly what you want to do. But anyway. Well, one of the secrets of the background is my white Prismacolor. Cause I'll like, sometimes I'll bring it up, knock it down with the white Prisma color. So the white Prisma color really plays a big part in the background. Could you do a little like, oh, I can't make you promise anything. I, I won't hold you to anything you say right now, but okay. if you could do like a jelly bean for us, they're just 60 to 90 minutes about knocking down a background like that, or just a little, oh, section. Yeah. oh my gosh, we would love that. So I love doing the backgrounds. They're fun. Well, okay, we will talk to you about that. Another owl, you really love owls. And they're, yeah. they oh, love, I love you. Owls. I love elephants. I love owls. I love cats. <laughs> yeah, and then Bear. one last. So I, I love rabbits. Rabbits are my thing. And they're it's so what a cute. cutie. Just adorable. Yeah, you know, uh, you learn so much with each piece. So Yeah, were you going to say something about that? No, I was just going to say, it's uh, just always a learning experience. And I try to take it into the next piece. And, and your your greens, you know, of course, uh, yeah, I, I, maybe that's what this is, why this is so compelling. Your greens are so fantastic. They're not too green. They're not too blue. They're not too bright. They're just like so amazing. And green. There's lots of greens and gold, yellow golds. And yeah. You can yeah, see yeah. how much it switches from one where it's right. cooler in the shade. It's much right. more blue you know, uh, greens. And then, um, yeah, that's one of the things, the lighting in this is what really, that's why when I was working in the yard and I saw her laying there and it was the grasses, you know, that I hadn't, <laughs> I, I'm really bad. I'd rather be trying than doing yard work. So the grasses kind of got out of hand and, but it worked well for this piece. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, we are going to stop sharing the screen so that we can, there we go. And that looks like maybe there's another comment or two. You are so very talented, beautiful work. And I love your cats. Thank you for doing this interview. That's from Patricia mm -hmm. Fagan. So detailed and beautiful. Let's look at you. sunlight right in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then, yes, Robin says, yes, please, jelly bean background. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, oh, we would love to have you do that, but I know your time is tight, so we'll 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 yeah. see what we can do. Yeah. Um. Uh. Anything you want to add? Hmm. Anything coming up that you want to? Uh, is there any? Yeah. Anything at all? Well, with my, I haven't drawn as much this year because a lot of things in life just kind of got in the way this year. But um, I went to I, I mentioned that I went to Africa and I um. I did things a little bit different there in taking images. Like last time I went, I took like over 6,000. This time I, I studied the animal more and their behavior and took way less photo, way less, but like half. And I set up my, cause I know kind of my um, style now. So I set the image up a little bit more, but then I came back and um, really worked on getting the compelling compositions going for that so I've, I've wow. already been like five you know worked them out I haven't started any of them but um because I just moved and that took me four months of right. you know so I didn't draw it all in that time but um so I'm really working on composition and I think honestly that's kind of what got me that sippy award is because I worked so much on the composition and I think that's I think they get like curators and museum directors and stuff to judge those things. So I, th oh, yeah. I think they are looking more for, you know, real complex compositions. So, right. well, uh, you know, we also have like shocking drawing skills, but yeah. How did we not mention, oh my gosh, I didn't, yeah. Y yes. Winning the Scythia oh. award. I mean, <laughs> well, I didn't huge. purposely bring that up for that, but no, I'm yeah. just saying, I think that's what, and I noticed when I, I, I do a lot of research on shows like, um, arc, anything that I'm not even related to me, like painting, I'll study, um, uh, shows with painters and what won. Um, and it's always like, really the compositions are really amazing, you know? Yeah. And so, I think that's super important and it totally interests me. I just mm -hmm. love doing it. Yeah. So the ones I did of the Africa that are come, you'll see in the next few yeah. years are really, um, really, really composed, just like the cat one was. 
Well, I I just think it's so smart to study. I mean, studying what's our, what's working on yeah. somebody else, studying what's winning, winning prizes, studying, or, you know, that is just, and, and it's just so smart. And um, it's free. Yeah, studying other artists that are right. like the top in their fields, you know, and I don't just study color pencil artists. I, you know, right. painters doing people, whatever, you know, if they're good, I'm going to listen to what they say. So photographers for, for the yeah. composition and lighting and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Very photographers, are, you know, they're all about lighting. So listening to them, I watch a lot of YouTubes, Charlie Hunter. He always has really great people on his. So Charlie, I'm writing that down. Oh, I love Charlie. I do a Hunter's lot part. of YouTube. We got to go, but man, we oh, look up Charlie. Another hour. This just flew by and I did knew it was going to be great. Uh, but it was better than anticipated. I mean, you are Thank truly you. a genius and and I mean such a humble genius, which is, you know, it's just so refreshing. Well, not, I mean, not that there's not there's not a lot of CP people with big ego. Uh, no, there you know, is that's the nice thing about color pencil. We all yeah. care about sharing and, and bringing each other up. But you're Absolutely. just exceptionally humble for your talent level. I mean, you're just nuts. You're not, you're a nuts woman. <laughs> you're a genius. I appreciate that. There's <laughs> <laughs> only a handful. And I would definitely put you in there. No questions. Well, and audience, I know you couldn't talk, but you had some great questions and, and feedback. And I appreciate that. And, um, and if anyone's question didn't get answered, you can always write me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a, your email might even be on the Padlet. So um, oh, anyway, you all get a link to the Padlet. We can add Catherine's um, email address to, is, if that's okay, to yeah. the Padlet and you can ask uh, Robin or sorry, Catherine, whatever you'd like. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I mean, yeah. I've known you now for a while and worked with you and it's always a pleasure. Thank well, you. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. That. Oh yeah. Well, great. All right, mutual society, mutual yeah. society is ending. <laughs> That's right. Bye. Bye.